Recently, I was quite rattled up by an unexpected encounter. Unexpectedly and uncomfortably, my mother-in-law stole my passport and burned it. The passport burned swiftly, turning it to ashes in a matter of seconds. I was in complete shock that this conduct had suddenly put an end to my intentions to take a holiday to St. Bee's Island. I confronted her and asked her to explain herself, but all she did was sneer and tell me icily that I was a stranger and would be staying at home with her instead of going anywhere. My spouse merely smiled, joining in the trickery. Their callous maneuver was startling, but not wholly unanticipated. Their degree of cunning, though, was something I had not expected. They laughed together at their seeming success, as if they enjoyed their plot. Frustrated and feeling the need to stand up for myself, I reminded them of who I am at that precise moment. Kayla is my name. I'm a 30-year-old linguist. As a language student and teacher at the university, I frequently spend long stretches of time overseas as part of my job to interact with various cultures and impart my expertise through my organization. I frequently have to travel for work, which means I'm often gone from home for months at a time. I never thought I would get married before starting this work. But all changed when, at the age of 25, I went back to my native country and met Peter, who would go on to become my spouse. My job requires me to travel for work around half the year, so it presents obstacles. But Peter and I were still able to stay in touch by email and phone calls. We got married when I was 27, and despite the fact that our marriage requires a lot of time spent apart, he has been nothing but supportive. I'm heading home from the airport today, and it's been six months since my previous visit with my husband. Even after the lengthy travel and the unexpected developments over my passport, I feel more excited than tired. I can't wait to see Peter again, and am moving fast in the direction of what I hope will be a happy reunion, and maybe a resolution to the recent chaos his family has caused. When I got home after a lengthy absence, Peter wasn't back yet, so I started to clean up a little. I always tell him to keep our apartment tidy, but it's typically a little messy. I would normally take offense at this, but today I was just too happy to see him again to care. Hearing the front door open, I busied myself in the kitchen. Peter was the one. I was so happy that I ran to give him a heartfelt, Welcome home, Peter. I'm quite happy to see you. He gave a blah reaction, saying, Oh, hi, Kayla. You've returned. Is that all? After six months apart, I thought. I was unable to conceal my dismay. Peter, it has been six months since we last saw each other. Will you not admit that you missed me? He gave a shrug. Since this has been our routine for a time, I suppose I'm accustomed to it. Simply put, I'm exhausted. Is dinner ready to eat? Indeed, it's prepared, I said, attempting to get over the awkwardness. Let's eat. Dinner seemed special today, as it usually did, especially after spending so many months apart. But it was also a little melancholic. He appeared to be split attention, looking down at his phone all the time. I had to voice how frustrated I was. Hey, Peter, what's up with you always looking at your phone? He was contemptuous. There's nothing wrong, but we've been in contact via calls and emails while you've been away, right? Nothing new needs to be discussed. That was painful. That may be the case, Peter, but our relationship hasn't been for a while. That ought to be taken into consideration. I was getting more and more frustrated, and it seemed to be upsetting him. With a start, he got up, set his phone down, and gave me a fierce look. What do you know? I'm tired from work, but you just got off a plane. His remarks hurt. Hold on. I also came straight here after work, I shot back. Don't speak to me in that manner. You weren't asked to hurry. You decided to return home right away, he retorted icily. His words wounded me, but I had to express how I felt. You don't have to use that exact phrase. In spite of everything, I thought about you. We both paused at that point, the weight of our words lingering over us. 
When I had returned home after several months away, the atmosphere was eerily tense. It was colder than Peter had anticipated. He blurted out, I'm just saying, I didn't ask you to rush home, as we were sitting down to supper. If this is how you're going to behave, then you should consider not returning at all. Kayla, you're annoying me. He stormed out of the room, slamming the table in frustration, and left his food unfinished. I was by myself and was perplexed. Why was he behaving so distant? Though it seemed like I was the only one looking forward to our reunion, I had been looking forward to it. If returning home early would just result in disappointment, what was the point? I sat there crying on the table, a sinking sense of dread overpowering the delight of our reunion. The tension persisted in the morning. I responded, good morning to him, and he sent me a cold look and remarked, I envy you. You are able to unwind at home all the time, whereas I am confined to my desk. I corrected him, since that was untrue. Peter, it is not correct. Compiling a summary of our operations and getting ready for the upcoming training session are among my many tasks. You underestimate how much work it is. He disregarded everything I had tried. Yes, but you could work from home instead. I would love to be able to take half of the year off from work. You have fun when you're at home, princess. His sardonic tone stunned me, and I watched him walk out of the home without saying anything more. He had never been this savage. We'd had our share of arguments in the past. I was perplexed by his sardonic manner and concerned about the developing distance between us. I busied myself with domestic duties, including vacuuming and changing the sheets, while I thought about what could help us salvage our relationship. My phone rang in the middle of this. My mother-in-law was there. Hello, Kayla here, I replied, feeling uneasy. Hello, Kayla. It has been some while. I've heard you're back at home and that yesterday wasn't so good. Yes, that's correct, I hesitantly answered. And Peter is upset too, I heard. He was quite irate. My uncertainty and anxiety increased after the conversation, and I began to wonder how I would mend the rift that had grown between us since my return. I was taken aback by my mother-in-law's proposal during the phone chat. How about we arrange a family vacation now that you're back? she said. She went on. I was talking with my husband about going to St. Bees Island, and Peter mentioned he wanted to join us, before I could even begin to grasp the concept. I take it you're used to taking trips overseas? Could you assist us with making hotel reservations and making other plans? Her request was fulfilled. Her tone made it obvious that she saw an opportunity to take advantage of my travel experience rather than truly enjoying the idea of going on a trip with me. My mother-in-law and I had never gotten along well. Since that day at the wedding reception when we first met, she had never disguised her contempt for me. She'd always had a snarky attitude. She had been married for three years, but her opinions had not changed. When I was working abroad, she often sent me messages that stung. How can you be a wife and stay away from home for months? If you don't take care of the house, I'd rather my son marry someone else. It was a mistake to let him marry you. These memories made me apprehensive about her proposal. It felt like I was being used to facilitate their travel plans, a task that seemed more appealing than enduring her usual critiques. I was frustrated with myself for my inability to decline, even though I recognized that I was being manipulated. A few hours later, Peter returned from work in a noticeably better mood than he had been earlier. He dropped his briefcase on the sofa, flashed a wide smile, and said, Mom called, didn't she? We can go on a trip to St. B's. Yeah, I heard, I replied cautiously. But you're not thinking of turning it down, are you? Mom wants you to come with us, he pressed. His enthusiasm made it even harder to express my reservations. I understood his desire for me to be involved, but the dynamics made me uneasy. 
How could I navigate this situation without escalating tensions or feeling even more used? As the conversation about the family trip continued, I cautiously suggested, Why don't you just go with your mom and dad as you originally planned? The moment those words left my lips, Peter's attitude shifted dramatically. He clicked his tongue, and his voice took on a more threatening tone. You need to understand your role here. The only time you're useful to us is when we're traveling, his words stung. You don't have to speak like that, I protested. It's true, isn't it? He retorted, undeterred. Anyway, you'll handle all the flight and hotel bookings, and everything should be in my name, as you probably know. But Peter, you're going to pay for the whole trip? I asked, trying to clarify our financial arrangement. What are you talking about? We'll split the cost 50-50. It's a small price to pay to show respect to our parents, he argued, implying that my objection was disrespectful. And what is that supposed to mean? I questioned. If you've got time to lounge around at home, make the reservations now, he demanded. This isn't right. I don't want to, I mumbled, my voice barely above a whisper. What are you mumbling about? He scoffed, grabbing a beer from the fridge and downing it in one gulp. Despite my inner turmoil and the unfairness of the situation, I felt cornered, embarrassed, and without a real choice. I proceeded to make all the arrangements for the flights and accommodations for the trip to St. Bert's Island, just as Peter and his mother had insisted. On the day of the trip, I was set to pick them up at my in-law's house and head straight to the airport. But a few days before our departure, I found myself restless and unable to sleep. Late at night, I realized Peter wasn't beside me. I walked to the living room and overheard him on the phone. It's okay, Mom. I'll be there first thing in the morning as planned. Please handle the passport issue anyway. Seriously, I'm looking forward to it. I'll make sure to introduce her to you, he said into the receiver. Hearing this, I was filled with a mix of emotions. What was supposed to be a family trip was turning into a series of commands and manipulations. And now, there were secrets too. I stood there, unsure of how to confront this new revelation. When I returned to bed, Peter's conversation still echoed in my mind. He had mentioned a passport and introduced someone, and since he was speaking to his mother, I was sure it was my mother-in-law on the other end. There seemed to be hidden plans that I wasn't privy to, which made me uneasy about the upcoming trip. It was clear that something was being orchestrated behind my back, but I couldn't grasp the full extent of it. Resolved to remain vigilant, I prepared for our departure with caution. The day of our trip to St. Burr's Island finally arrived. I methodically packed both my carry-on and handbag, including items for my husband, ensuring we were ready for the journey. With everything set, Peter and I drove to my in-law's house. As we approached, I braced myself, unsure of what awaited us, but ready to face whatever might come. Upon our arrival, it was only my mother-in-law who greeted us. Oh, hi, Kayla. It's been a while. Good to see you. We're almost ready. I just need to grab a few things for the trip, so it might be a little while, she said. Her tone casual, but with a sense of urgency that raised my suspicions further. Okay, take your time, I replied. Then she added, Oh, and Kayla, could you bring the carry-on case from the other room? It's heavy, so please get Peter to help you. Sure, I'll do that, I agreed, keenly observing the exchange of knowing glances between my husband and mother-in-law. I kept my passport securely in my pocket, an instinctual move born from the mistrust that had been building. As I followed my husband's directions and returned to the living room with the carry-on, I found my mother-in-law waiting with a mischievous grin. To my horror, she was holding my passport in her hands. Now you can't go on the trip to St. Bert's, she declared with a smirk. What do you mean? I asked. I'm going to burn this passport right now, she threatened. What did you just say? I reacted in disbelief, 
the gravity of her words sinking in. I was just using you to handle the trip arrangements, she admitted callously. You're a stranger here, so you'll be staying behind. Too bad. Her words struck me like a cold slap. The situation was far worse than I had imagined, and the betrayal cut deep. I realized I was not just an outsider in their plans, but a mere pawn in whatever game they were playing. The revelation left me reeling, unsure of how to respond to such blatant manipulation and deceit. My mother-in-law made an abrupt and startling move when she raced into the kitchen, ignited a lighter, and set a passport on fire in the sink. The paper rapidly caught fire and, in front of us, turned to black ashes. We did it, she exclaimed gleefully when it was utterly destroyed. My spouse cheered and joined in. Yes, Mom! We succeeded. No, I said in reply. This trip is just the three of us, right? When we return, we'll get to meet Peter's new girlfriend. With a casual reply, Yeah, I've already set that up, my mother-in-law said. We don't need this useless woman anymore. Coldly, my father-in-law added his voice. Then, appearing proud of himself, he took out his cell phone and showed me images of himself with another woman. You're remaining here while we leave on our trip. I'm not divorcing you to protect my reputation. You can go, and I'll move in with her when we return. His remarks caused my mother-in-law to chuckle sarcastically, their faces displaying a deep hatred. I realized then that I was no longer a member of this family. I asked, By the way, whose passport is that? While forcing a smile, What topic are you discussing? Of course it's yours. I removed it from your purse, she declared with assurance. My passport is in this pocket right here, I stated, pointing to the real document. What? Why, it just cannot be, she stumbled, her self-assurance wavering. I displayed my passport to her, undamaged. It is, in fact, my passport. Examine yourself. Her face turned pale with terror as the realization hit her. Her voice quivering. She whispered, That's not possible. It seems that my mother-in-law mistakenly believed she had removed my passport from my purse. Malicious as she was, her intentions had not included carefully inspecting the passport before burning it. Her question was mixed with confusion and dread, her voice trembling. Whose passport did I burn then? She inquired. I guess it was your son's passport that was in there. I said. You burned my son's passport? Terrified, she questioned. My mother-in-law became pale as she realized how serious her error had been. Her reckless behavior and the revealed underlying plots have irreversibly damaged the already tense family dynamics. Chaos broke out as soon as my mother-in-law learnt the passport she had destroyed belonged to her son. My spouse yanked a tantrum at her. What actions have you taken? I cautioned you to use caution. In her handbag, I only discovered one passport. Who would have guessed that I owned it? It doesn't concern me, he yelled. You didn't check thoroughly and now look what happened. Are you implying that I'm to blame? I wouldn't have made this mistake if you had checked from the beginning, she shot out, her voice rising in defense. They started criticizing one other as their fight quickly became more heated. Into the chaos, my spouse turned to face me. Hey, Kayla, do something. However, I refuse to be pulled into their mess any longer. Really? Who do you think is directing my actions? You secretly cheated on me. You are really daring. You and your mother are both abhorrent. I answered back. Hey, who do you think you're talking to? My spouse lost his cool. I'm speaking with both you and your terrible mother. I'm not going to ignore this, I promise. You're going to make up for the affair and everything your mother said to me that was hurtful. Get set. I said that I was going to get tougher. My father-in-law arrived at that moment, drawn by the commotion. What's the situation here? He asked. What are you doing? I told him everything, and he got furious. 
There were serious repercussions when the scheduled trip was abruptly canceled. My husband's father shunned him and forbade him from going back home, and my mother-in-law was considering filing for divorce. I got legal advice and went ahead with the divorce. In addition, I required my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law to pay alimony in full and to reimburse me for the expenses incurred from the postponed trip to St. Nevis Island. They were ill-prepared financially and had to borrow money to cover these costs. Ultimately, my ex-husband ended up in a difficult financial condition and is currently living with his mother. The woman he had an affair with also left him. I moved into a condo and started over with the alimony money, embracing an independent life free from abuse and infidelity in the interim. I overcame a lot of obstacles to get stronger. I'm enjoying life now, have plans to travel more, I'm learning about other cultures and am sharing my experiences with the globe.